and welcome to Spookies Hunting for History. I'm Stephen. And I'm Becky. And today we are back at Billsdean in Billsdean Waterfall out at East Lothian in Scotland. If you've not seen the first video, don't worry because you don't need to have, but we'll put the link in the description. Uh, this video is over the course of a few visits actually and I'll label them. Um, the first one of just me by myself going out there to see what else I could see. And you'll see where Billsdean is here on the map from Edinburgh. It's about a 40 minute drive, so it's really not too bad for us. And just to show you in comparison to some of our other Hunting for History videos, you'll see the Gagan up there on the left, as well as Inuit Castle, which we'll be revisiting soon as well. I thought um, it'd be interesting to show this old map. You can actually see Inuit Castle on it as well as Billsdean. Um, just to show you how close they actually are, they're not far at all. And I think this is all related uh, in part of the bigger picture. And just for a little bit of context, uh, Innerwick Castle was our first ever Hunting for History video, whereas Billsdean was our second, and we do think that they are related somehow, but we'll get to that in due time. For now though, we thought we'd share this map, this final map, we're going to be looking at this a bit uh, throughout this video, uh, because I found it really intriguing. You'll see there that they refer to Billsdean Waterfall as the Lynn. And that's because in Scotland, uh, the word Lynn has been used to refer to waterfalls or even just a pool of water below. So an interesting wee fact, and it makes you think about names like Roslyn and things like that, eh? but I diverge. Uh, you'll also see Castle Dykes mentioned there. We now know what Castle Dykes is. That was the name of the Iron Age fort that is said to be there up on the hill. Uh, we're actually going to go there first. That's my first stop. Uh, so you get to see that and see the views from it. And here we go. So here we are, entering Billstein, and that was the motorway there. Uh, you uh -huh. come in from that, you have to cross the road if you park where we parked. So it's a little bit dodgy, but you can walk in here and we'd normally go left uh, towards Billstein with the waterfall and all that. But today on this visit, I'm going to go right, I'm going to go here. Because as I said, this is where the Iron Age Fort of Castle Dykes is said to have, have been. And you know, I wanted to get a look at it, see if I could see anything and see what the views were like from up here. Looking out to the coast. It is said that somewhere around here there stood a fort. Canmore.org.uk says the Ordnance Survey name book gives the name as Castle Dykes, while noting a local informant saw some stone coffins dug up here some years before 1853. It is unknown when this fort is said to be from, uh, with some listing it as Iron Age, another simply prehistoric. The fort is said to be a long triangular area cut off on its only undefended side by a huge earth rampart. Canmore.org.uk also notes that foundations of stone structures have been found when plumbing the site. There is also a fragment of the rim of a Roman colourless glass vessel found on this site. Just like the comb at Gegan, we'll see if we can track it down and share it in a future community post or a wee short. So here we are on top, overlooking at the coast. Check out these views. Back again, just because I wanted to point out these blackened rocks, sort of highlighting, you know, the, the patterns of where they come out of the water. It made me have a think, so I just thought I'd share it. And here you can see that rock that is underneath all these stones and pebbles in that in the area. I'll get a, a good look at some of that a couple of times in this video, so look out for that. And here we are looking down at the place we'll be visiting later on, we'll be passing by here. If you have seen the first video, you'll recognise that big sloped rock. We had a really close look at that. But now we're just going to move further along to have a little peek up this end before we turn back and make our way down to the coast. Now, looking at this, you might start to get some idea of why we think that parts of this area is actually fabricated. And I think we've captured some reasonable evidence that alludes to that, so yeah, check it out, it's coming up. For now though, we're just going to get a wee look more at these lovely views from up high before we move down to the water. We 
Look at that, eh? With a wee nose bump, there's some more wildlife. Looked like they were wanting to take me down or something. So, I thought, I've reached my limit, and I turned round from here on eh, to go back and explore down near the coast. And let me tell you what I found is really steered the next few videos, so really interesting. And this is us heading back down to the wee forest a bit at Bilsdean from Castle Dykes Fort. And here is the forest, and that's the Bilsdean burn down there, and that's where it passes under the, the road, the main motorway road, um, just where you come in. And we're going to make our way now down to the coast, but passing by some familiar sights if you have seen part one. And you know, they talk about the Roman things they found up on the fort, but I can't find anything about what these are meant to be. And we did have a look at this on the first video. Um, clearly structures, overgrown, hidden away underneath all the foliage. There's quite a few of these along. Um, these ones I thought just look amazing with the curved stone, things like that. What would it used to be? Um, you know, I'm really unsure uh, because we've looked up lots of information about this area and I just can't find any mention of these, these structures. And you'll see there's a bit more down there, but before we make our way along, here is Bilsdean Waterfall itself. Now I said that on our first video on this, but um, I'm becoming more convinced every time I look at it. Um, but Bilsdean Waterfall to me really does look like just a, a sort of destroyed old structure and something remaining. Um, and look at all this, what we noticed around it this time. It looked like some sort of wall. Here's a better look at it. Um, it could have just been built, yeah, as a walkway around the waterfall back in the day. But I wanted to make note of it. And also this thing. Uh, this Interesting piece of metal, just an area I thought I'd capture it while I was up here. And I actually climbed up to this bit um, back from the waterfall to try and see what these block looking things were. And right enough, look at this, I mean this really does look fabricated right enough. Um, and you'll see in the corner here this, this sort of right angle, clearly looking like blocks, um, really interesting. I didn't notice this properly last time so I was, thought it was good to see. And here's just some more of those blocks along. I mean, look at the size of these. Uh, and these visits, I should say that, it seemed to be more exposed uh, than the first time that we were here in our first video. Once again, just more of these hidden along the walk next to the burn. They're clearly looking like blocks again underneath all this foliage. And it just makes my mind wonder what is underneath all the rest of the foliage. Here I am trying to get a closer look, but let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think this is just a natural crumbling wall, or do you think there is some sort of old world history here? Some old structures going on underneath a lot of this foliage. And hey, maybe it was just part of the fort. I mean, to me, these are definitely mm -hmm. built. Some sort of built walls, some built structures. And you see bits like this, I mean, look at it. It's crying out for you to look under it. And then when you go and do look under it, I mean, look at the sort of stuff you see. It's clearly a wall from the past. Um, and I will really, really am curious to know a little bit more about it. But as I said, I can't really find much on this bit, this area at all. But this is just a 
tiny droplet of what's to come, so stick around. I wanted to make note of this unusual spot because we're going to see something similar in just a moment when we get to the cliffs. Um, really intriguing, it looked a little bit like a metal at points, but it could just be a natural rock and it formed strange. But as I've continued to walk along here, uh, not to forget my hat of course, you'll see some more uh, again just hidden away. What is all this? Really makes my, my mind wander. But that's not why I came here. We've came here for this sort of looking stuff, which we're going to see lots more of. And if you've seen our video on the Gegen, you're going to see a lot of similarities. So, yeah, stick around for that one. And if you've not seen the Gegen, I, I do suggest checking out, because I think that's a really interesting video, actually. But here's another look at another piece of these sort of structures that's built along the burn. Really making me wonder what's going on here. Are these related to the, the fort up on the hill? Oh. It could be. Now just before we go down to the shore, uh, I wanted to turn back and get a, a closer look up at the cliffs uh, but before that, uh, that strange structure that we've seen just on the way in. And here is me trying to get that. You can see it just poking out the ground here, I wonder what it used to be. Interesting stuff, right? And just before we go to the cliffs to have a wee peek at them, um, check out this, just up behind uh, where we were. Look at that, just peeking through the ground. And to me, this is blocks. I mean, there's nothing else for it. Look at it. Seemingly running right along under all this foliage. And then round the corner onto the cliff face. And that's why I wanted to get a wee look at the cliff face. But Look at this, they just look like massive blocks, to me anyway. And I thought this was a good bit to show you what I mean. Uh, you can see I've highlighted the lines there, the separations of the blocks, or what appears to be anyway. And yeah, you can see what I'm talking that. about. Um, really intriguing. I do think these are blocks, big ones. And check this little interesting feature that we found in the corner here. So like we've seen before, it looked to be like some sort of metal or iron poking out from the stone here. And this won't be the last time we see that today. But here we are around the corner at the cliff face at the shore sort of thing, looking over the sea now. You'll see it sort of continues round. So I was keen to get down to the actual beach, so I only spent a wee bit longer here, but I'm glad I did, because uh, check out this spot that we found. This bit was really interesting. And we're going to zoom in on some of this in a minute, so please let me know your thoughts in the comments about what this stuff could be. And I know I say it a lot, but I think this could be fabricated. I wanted to make note of these little lumps here, reminding me of some of the ones you see on these megalithic blocks from around the world. Or could that just be the original level of the block? I don't know. But I wanted to point it out, because uh, I do think that these are fabricated. I want to look at the land first. Stunning. So what do you think this could be? Uh, we actually shared this on TikTok 
We had a lot of suggestions from haggises, of course, to things like bees hive and things like that. I think it looks like a piece of old metal or something like that. Maybe iron, I know we say that a lot here. But look at this other stuff. I mean, really unnatural looking shapes to me. It looks like something really, really old. Again, I say this a lot. Maybe something we just don't understand from a civilization and a time that we can't comprehend. Who built this if it is indeed a structure? I wonder. Um, but it's really interesting stuff. So I'm finally getting down to the beach and if you saw the first Bilsdean visit uh, you'll recognise this wee wall. It's an amazing wee spot and still couldn't find much about it to be honest. Before going to the route we, we wanted to, I thought I'd go right today and have a wee look along here because we peek. And I believe up there is the actual Castle Dykes Fort and perhaps where I was was the Mound of Earth that you see there, just like Becky said. And now we're down below. Um, and we're going to go and check out what we can see along here to the right of the beach, just very briefly. Now I'm going to be heading back to the opposite end of the beach in just a moment and just wait till you see what I find there. Um, I did want to point out some of the things here because there was a few interesting things to look at. Mm, one notably, this sort of floor. Um, it, it looks just natural um, and it probably is. I wanted to point it out because it was remarkably similar to some of the parts of which we saw what we thought weren't natural and I'll point them out later on. Uh, this just looks way heavily more damaged, uh, if you know what I mean. Um, but it's a really nice wee spot, and with loads of interesting things. And here's one of those that appears to be a rock uh, trapped inside another one. Um, and there's loads of clay stuff in this area, and I just assumed that this was in some of that clay that had dried. Um, but it could be something else. I just wanted to show you it, because it's really interesting. And this area is really good to explore, uh, to see wee things like that. But continuing along the beach and look at some of these blocks, this one really looked like it had some sort of remnants of an orange sort of irony look to it. Uh, so I wanted to show you it because it looked so cool uh, to me. Look at the size of it, eh? cool. And some other ones that you'll see kicking about uh, looking rather sus, of course. Here's another one that I noticed had a sort of stone protruding from it, a little lump anyway for another interesting point. Um, but yeah, just wanted to make note of some of this before heading back. Of course, this was probably the most interesting bit that I've seen at this end. And uh, look at the size of these. Again, really not looking completely natural to me. Uh, so it made me, really made me wonder. But here I am anyway, heading back towards the entrance uh, so we can make our way to the other end of the beach. See someone lost a boot there, and you really could see anything washed up here because uh, it's right at the the east coast and it's pretty wild out there. As you'll see, it can be pretty dangerous actually in the water. It does come in quite far at parts, and you can actually get cut off and trapped, as I learned. So yeah, it's a pretty dangerous place, and I guess you got to be quite careful. But here is the Bilstein Burn exiting from the other end of the wall. Quite a cool wee spot, and if you did see the first video, we've got some good footage of this. During our first visit, um, I actually walked down the entirety of the burn from the waterfall to this tunnel, believe it or not. I've got footage of that somewhere if anyone's interested. But there it is anyway, running out to sea. A lot more uh, water this time. It was much heavier than the other times that I've been visiting here. And it was nice to see it like that because it really was just piddling on our first video. But here's where things start to get really interesting. And if you've seen the gegging, you'll recognise some of this stuff. It what looks to be like some sort of other material within the sandstone, within the rock. 
they're running in a straight line going along. Um, what do you make of it? Could it be the same sort of thing? Is it the gegging? I think so. Uh, let me look at this stuff. Here's other great examples of it. Really looking like a layer with more sandstone on top of it and then another layer. And look at this. I mean, this place is filled with interesting bits like this. And here's some more of what appears to be that metal or iron or whatever it is um, within the rock, as part of the rock. Really interesting, isn't it? What's been going on here? It uh, really makes me wonder, but I do think this stuff has to be really old then, if it's been sitting down here that long. Um, I mean, look at it, what do you think it used to be? Now just looking to point out this really flat piece of ground because there's bits like that all over the place where the boulders are less and you can see it's just flat and really strange looking with lines in it. So yeah look out for that um, and anyone that's seen our first video on Bilstein will have recognised that big rock there. Um, that is really an unusual rock, it's filled with brick and other such stuff in it. We've got a really good look at it in the first video so if you want to see that go and check it out. I'm not going to spend too long on it in this one because I wanted to get further along and see parts that I hadn't seen but we will have a wee brief look underneath it here. And here you can see the actual ground as well as this sort of strange red uh, liquid stuff that's running down which I thought was intriguing. Now look at this stuff. This to me just looks like a really old ancient floor. Sure, um, it may have been eroded much more by the water, but I think it was originally made like that. With the channels, I mean. Um, there's all these lines and stuff running over it, and they're just too straight. I just can't imagine nature making things like that. I could be 100% wrong, of course, but I just like to point out these bits. I mean, look at that. It's more of that sort of metal looking things popping through it, kind of like we saw the Gegen and we'll see a lot more of in this video actually. And if that's the case, who did it? Because we certainly don't make things like this. But look at it, it really looks like some sort of floor uh, with all those lines and patterns in it. Maybe I'm completely bonkers but that's just what I'm seeing. And here we are, look at this. I mean, overgrown with grass and moss and whatever's up there. It really does look like some massive structure. And you'll see the sort of block shapes and stuff when we get a wee look at it here and there. I wanted to point at this bit though, because this one really looked intriguing. I mean, come on. Do you think this is natural? Look at it. Now there's some really interesting spots on this one. We're going to take a really quick close-up look. Look at the lines going along at a completely separate angle here. Um, the difference or odds there is a rock, it's really, really strange. I think this has to be fabricated, come on. And if that's the case, it makes you wonder what's going on with this whole coastline. Uh, but we'll get to that. Now that is where I was just standing up close, and look at that, how amazing is it? Now I thought this was looking like some sort of ancient remains, but that's just the start of it. So here we are zoomed in, and you can see these sort of block shapes if you look really closely, and it looks like it's had some sort of, something smeared over the top of it anyway, something that was maybe a liquid form at one point, and it's been wiped, wiped over it, and then it's solidified, joining up some of the gaps there you'll see, covering the, the lines. At least that's what it looks like to me. And at the top of the screen there's a great example of some blocks there. I don't think you can really argue with that. And yeah, I just think it's all really interesting. This does look like some sort of block wall to us. And here's just some more stuff at the bottom. And another great example of what we're saying between join marks being sort of joined up with some sort of material that's been wiped over the top of it. 
or maybe it's geopolymer blocks that have actually settled that way. Whatever it is, it looks fabricated. And if it is, then what's going on with this entire coastline? Because there's loads of bits that look like this in this area. There's even a field on top of this. Anyway, getting back to it. And I'm actually going to walk along here and climb up onto that next bit on the left. And wait till you see what I find over there. Excuse me for being a bit of a saddle there, but I didn't actually know this was here. And look at this stuff, exactly like the Gigan. Even better example, I'd say. Look at it sticking out with the stone, sandstone drying on top of it. It's the perfect example. I mean, look at it. You can see it running right along. And I did jump down, despite being worried about getting stuck. And actually, I did almost get stuck. Um, but I'll tell you about that in a minute. But look at this place. And I just wanted to point out the similarities between this bit and the Gegen from one of our previous videos. Look at that. The Gegen just looks much more run down. And of course, the Gegen has that lower tide there. So maybe they are more similar than we even realise. What an absolutely amazing place, right? There was just so much to see, so much to look at, and so much to really want to investigate. Um, but I thought I'd better get going because it was actually the tide coming in and the sun going down. But believe it or not, I was stuck. I couldn't climb back up where I had jumped down. So I actually had to find another way, which involved climbing up a grassy hill, uh, clawing into the grass, and here's me when I arrived at the top of it. So I could jump oh. back down the other end. Uh, what an idiot, right? I learned my lesson that day, and I won't be doing anything stupid like that again. So this time, I've came back with my dad. Perhaps most important though, we've came back at low tide. So here we are just making our way back to the bit with the arches and the hole. Before we do that I wanted to look at this map again and this is from somewhere between 1840 and 1880 and you'll see they have the, the hole marked as Otter Hole and we thought that was really intriguing because we did see an otter here on our first Bildstein visit. Uh, check out that video and you want to see the wee fella. I find it interesting because it's not actually marked on any modern maps I could find. This is actually the only map I could see Otter Hole mentioned, and perhaps then um, it's a place where otters were known to live. You also see Stand Alone, I'm, I'm assuming that's referencing the Standing Alone rocks that we see, the big cliffs, and also Do Cove, I thought that was interesting, I couldn't see what that was referenced to, but it seemed to be around about near the area where that strange sloped rock it came from. 
So lots of strange things um, to consider, and looking at the old maps really helps paint a better picture, I think. Anyway, here we are, back on our way. You alright? Hey wait there, that's slippy, there's a better one than that. Oh, you did it. So here we are back on site and you'll notice straight away that the tide is out. So we picked our times right and this gives us a nice opportunity to have a good look around this area. Um, similar to at the Gegen actually. Now you'll see we are actually back at Otter's Hole, but look, I wanted to point out this first. I think it's absolutely incredible. To me, this looks like a really old structure. Look at the block-like shapes all around it. Absolutely amazing. Um, what do you think this is? Personally, I think this is a really old world structure. Look at the block-like shapes around it. Um, it really does look suspicious to me, and I think this has to be fabricated. And as you'll see, we even think there's maybe some entrances to this place that has been blocked up. But back to Otter's Hole for now. Well, not quite. Because I am a restless person, I wanted to get a look around this area first. So, I thought I'd have a look around and see the layout of the land, so to speak. I do go back to our holder, uh, and we have a look at it with the torch, so stick around for that. For now, here is a look around at the shore here, and you'll see some really quite angular shapes. And this is a regular feature of the area. Lots of right angles and straight lines and other wee anomalies, actually. And I guess that's where the debate can come into it, whether these were formed naturally or if these have been fabricated or carved or something like that. I do think that there has been some sort of interference here, whether this place has been completely fabricated or it's just parts of it carved, things like that. This has definitely had stuff done to it. And I don't see how they can pick out, you know, certain areas. I mean, there's a place in here called Lady Hall's Pool. Uh, which I tried to get a look at later on. Um, but again, it seems strange that they would give places like that as an excuse, like a story as to why it exists in such an angular shape. But then there's tons of other places around here that don't have a story and don't have a, a special reason given to it as to why it is in such angular shape. Here's a wee look around the area and regardless of whether they're fabricated or not, they're really unusual and really, really interesting looking rocks. I'm sure you'll agree. 
the one you're seeing now is actually where the otter hole is on the right side of. And this is marked Stand Lane on that map we were looking at earlier on. I mean, look at this. It really well could just be a complete wreck of an old world structure. I found this also really interesting, that straight line up there, and you'll see all sorts of wee holes and what looks like entrances all over the place. And we're going to get a look over there very shortly. <laughs> so here we are back at Otter's Hole, and you'll notice here I wanted to point out the lines coming away from Otter's Hole are at an angle, um, seemingly running somewhere seemingly like something was maybe in there in that channel, I don't know. But I wanted to point that out. Right. And we're finally going to get a look inside it now yeah. with my trusty torch that we've got on this stick um, just to see if we can light up the inside and see what's going on in there. Look how deep this place is, first of all. It goes so far back. I mean, this stick is fully extended here and it goes right in. And it makes you wonder if there's any other turns in this place. Maybe the otters have a whole home in here. A whole network of tunnels leading to who knows where. Um, but I wanted to show this, and you'll notice there on the right, where that's pointing right now, it seems that there was a little ridge. Again, just all looking at it, what could this be? Uh, if this is fabricated, as I genuinely believe, and I'm talking something really old that we won't understand, then it must have had a purpose. And I'm really curious as to what that could have been. Uh, so any thoughts on that, put them in the comments. I've already got a few flying around my head. I mean, it is on the sea. Could it be something to do with energy? I don't know. Um, but just getting a look at it at the moment. And very, very mysterious looking place. And you may have noticed that other wee alcove next to it. So I just thought I'd show you what that looks like inside it. And look how far up that goes. It's absolutely amazing. Now we're just about to start exploring further along, I wanted to point out a little bit I found at the front here of the standalone uh, rock as it's marked on the map. And I couldn't actually see up here, I noticed there was a little gap from when I was standing far away so I held the camera along with the stick um, to see if I could capture anything. And here's what I saw. With these really block like features I thought it was worth capturing and sharing, because uh, look at it, I mean really not looking natural, at least to us in a way, as I feel like we say a lot of times, but what do you think? Please put your thoughts in the comments on this one. Now it's time to start expanding our search away from Standalane Rock and Otter Hole um, to see what else we can find, but we'll have a wee look at them before we leave again. Um, and just to point out this interesting feature, do you think this looks familiar? Looks similar to that one we saw before? I also thought it was worth noting the black lines that appear to be coming from it and going to it. Almost like maybe there was something stuck on here and maybe something ran to it, I don't know. Again, some of those usual features, these holes that you see, like back at Roslyn Glen. Another interesting thing to note. But here is what I saw as I ventured further up the coast. Again, noting all these strange shapes everywhere and angular sort of shapes, I also wanted to point out this orange sort of look under the rock and just the flatness of it all. Anyway, onwards we go.
And a wee bit further along I started noticing these suspicious holes and look how deep some of these went. Really mysterious, right? That's right, I saw a wee bit of wildlife in that cave. I actually saw some really small fish that seemed to be swimming around in there and the wee puddle in there. Quite amazing stuff. And I wanted to try and get another look because I knew I never caught them on camera. But still no success. Um, but this is a closer look in there so I thought I'd keep it in anyway. So what do you make of that? I wonder what all this is for, um, if it is fabricated, or it just could be natural caves of course. Uh, what do you think? Please do share your thoughts in the comments, uh, but for now I'm going to continue making my way along here and see what I can find. What an intriguing part this is, right? Look at this. Is this metal in the sandstone again? It really looks like it. And there's loads of wee bits like this. And we're about to check out inside another one of these those cave areas. So yeah, check this one out. So what do you make of that then? It seems like a quite a large opening in there, um, to me in a way. Uh, we've got another one coming up, so stick around. Um, here you'll just see all the boulders, blocks, or what appears to be like that, just lying everywhere. Uh, this place really is just covered in rocks, um, so it's really, it's really hard to get around, I'm quite honest with you. Um, it takes a bit of time, and obviously with the tide going out, you don't have a whole lot of time. You're going to have to work your way back. So, I decided not to go too much more further, but here is what I saw. And speaking of rocks, boulders and blocks, I mean, look at the, the bundle of them here, and look how far down it really goes underneath them. It really shows you how much is bundled up here, and it really makes me wonder what's underneath it all, um, and if there's any other entrances perhaps being blocked away. Uh, but look at these rocks, a lot of mysterious looking, having that sort of metal looking markings in it and things like that. I think this is just wreckage from a, a structure, I really do. Um, a really old structure at that. What do you think? Now here's a really interesting spot, let me know what you think about this. Uh, but as I walk inside, um, I think this could be an old entrance um, that's become completely blocked up through time. Whether that be naturally, through collapse or whatever, or with a little bit of help. Um, you'll see as we go through here and turn right, to me it just looks like an old corridor that's filled with massive blocks. What do you think? Uh, please do share your thoughts in the comments, but here's what I'm talking about. I'd love to be able to see what's past these boulders and see if this goes anywhere. 
I think it's really intriguing. Uh, and more interestingly enough, it's directly in line, uh, if we look at the gap here, with Otter's Hole. Could they have been working together in a line? Um, possibly. Now it is time to start heading back to where I started, but there is still some really interesting things to see, including some apparent steps and some more of that metal coming in between the, the stone. Uh, so yeah, don't go anywhere if you want to see that. Now I wanted to highlight this bit, um, this is the bit I actually had to climb up to make my escape when I was here alone. Um, I thought there might be something underneath all the mud here, and as my dad was pointing out, there were so many small stones, bits of sand and other stuff here, it really looked like the remnants of maybe an old sort of concrete or something. Uh, so just something to note. Now in the same spot I also saw this rock with all these wee dots all over it and we saw this in our first Bill's Dean video, uh, we saw a few of these and we thought maybe it was a sign of the old world, maybe an imprint in some geopolymer or something. But we had a few comments uh, telling us that actually this could be stigmaria fossils, um, there might be root sections of ancient lycopod trees is what we were told. So thank you for the comments on that and helping us understand what this was meant to be. So we are just about to start heading back and exploring some more of the coast on the way, um, but first here are some pictures from the area. Interesting. Go back, eh? And look at this, I can't see this as anything other than completely fabricated. Look at the difference in the lines, going in separate directions and things like that, I just find it fascinating. Then you find this stuff poking out of certain spots. It looks like metal running along, and look there's parts where it's exposed and it's still remaining flat on the exposed rock which is really interesting. And here, I wanted to pause it, because look at that. It really looks like drips of geopolymer, which has landed on top of this black substance and solidified. Absolutely incredible, isn't it? So what do you reckon this could be? Please leave your thoughts in the comments. And I've left a link to a video of Paul Cook describing geopolymer in case you don't know what geopolymer is. He does a much better job at talking about that stuff and if it wasn't for his videos I probably wouldn't be noticing half this stuff. But as you'll see, these black substances are actually everywhere and poking out of different sections all around the place when you actually start looking around. And there's a lot of suspicious shapes, I think you'll agree. Um, the whole area is really quite intriguing and I definitely now I'm convinced this is an old structure.
if it's not a structure, at the very least, it's been interfered with by man or some other species and, you know, manipulated in some sort of way. I mean, look at this stuff. The lines just completely change in direction and then going back again. It's really interesting. Anyway, here's a couple more snaps of that strange wall that we saw just as we passed by it on the way back. Just having a look around and checking out these strange recesses again. I mean, look how far in this one goes and how flat and straight the sides of the, the blocks or the rocks are that are around it. It's really amazing. And now we're just going to get a wee closer look up here. Um, this is further along as we head back. And I thought this bit was really interesting. And that's because there are clear signs at this spot um, that it has been interfered with and that this is not completely natural. It can't be completely natural. And one of those points is just here. Well, there's a line there, first of all, um, but that isn't the point I was alluding to. And really impressive though, in the rock again, going right around the corner. But the point we wanted to show was these, these step looking like things. I mean, look at this. Surely this is not formed like that. Surely this has been manipulated. Um, could this be for Lady Hall's pool, which I'm going to mention later? I don't think so. And look at this in the rock again, uh, looking like metal or iron or something poking out in a completely straight line um, right through the rock or the geopolymer. Look at that, eh? Absolutely amazing. So we're almost done with this second visit, but I just wanted to show a couple of interesting features we saw on the way out again. You notice another wee gap there. And here's what I could see under there. Again, this place is just very mysterious and filled with loads of nooks and crannies like this. So finally we made it back to the Pilsdeen Burn and to make our way back to the car. And this is getting to the end of that second visit, but I do come back for a third visit with Becky. So here we are exiting Dillstein, but me and Becky are about to jump right back for a third wee visit as we head up on top. So here we are back for a very quick third visit and right away the resident wildlife is out and about. Whether the fort here was Iron Age, prehistoric or Roman is irrelevant, it's clearly their fort now. This time we are heading up the steps towards the fields to get a quick look at things from on top of the cliffs, or maybe the structure. The view must be good for up here, eh? Mm. After a short walk through the trees, we emerge on top. Check out the amazing views. Well, 
Let's have a peek. There it is. Oh, look, a wee bit of wildlife. Nice wee wall. Yeah, for going a tiny foot further before we turn back. So we came up here because we thought it would be good to see things from another perspective. From up high. And here you can see Otter's Hole from a way up here. I've been meaning to mention I think there are a lot of similarities between Otter's Hole and the Standalane Rock with somewhere that we saw at Roslyn in our Roslyn 2 video so check that out and please let me know your thoughts on that in the comments so once again there is Bilstein waterfall as we exit Bilstein Now I thought that was a stun with the area, but I hadn't managed to see a location called Lady Hall's Pool yet, so I wanted to nip back. So here I am, on my own again, but this time I was only venturing down to the beach. I wanted to have a look around to see if I could find Lady Hall's Pool. It's said to have been cut out of the rock. It's one of the few parts around here that has been given an explanation as to why it looks so fabricated. And that's the reason I wanted to see it and see if there was anything else, maybe yeah, steps yeah. or something around it but I was running out of time because it was getting dark I know, it's dark I liked coming out here at this time though because it was cool to see these waves and how they just interacted with the stones So this is Lady Hall's Pool That's actually quite hard to say it's said to be a bathing pool under the rock for Lady Hall. Um, it said there was a local tradition where she would come down to bathe in the seawater quite regularly. I goes on to claim that this regular bathing led to the creation of this pool. There's also said to be some steps around here, but I couldn't see them because it was so dark. But I'll come back and I'll put up as a short sometime, so look out for that. And look at this stuff I saw nearby. I didn't see this during the day, but I thought I'd capture it now. Just noticed this metal in the rock. Um, so yeah, quite interesting. Wasn't really sure what it was. Looked quite good condition, so I thought maybe it was just modern, but wow. Thought I'd better capture it while I could see it. And a final look at Lady Hall's pool. And just as I was leaving Billstein, my torch shined on this rock, which I noticed engravings on, so I picked it up and took it with me. And I thought, wow, look at this, how amazing is that? What do you think it could have been from? Um, I just thought it was remarkable. There were these sort of lines in it. Was it part of sun? Or is this just a mishmash of stuff that's been, you know, squashed like this by a tyre or something? Anyway, I checked it with the magnet and it does slightly react. Look at that, slight movement. So it's just got some sort of metal or iron in it. As always, feel free to let us know what you think. Anyway, earlier on we said we thought we'd found evidence to show that this place was fabricated. A little bit. So let's have a recap. 
We had strange blocks and block plugging shapes galore. Otter's hole. This thing. Steps carved into the rock. And some metal yeah. formed into the rock. Yeah. And these wee mysterious caverns galore. And of course all the stuff that I'd never mentioned and forgot to mention. But thank you so much for joining us today. And usually we'd show you something extra here. I said I'm going to tell you something extra. So, as you'll see in the bottom right there, uh, you'll see the otter hole and stand lane. But you'll also see in the middle of the screen that there's another stand lane. And moving up from that, there's a place labelled Old Walls. Can you believe it? On the coast. Um, so yeah, I told you this was an interesting map. And we have already visited both of these locations and are currently editing for the next video. But for now, I want to say a big thank you for joining us, especially if you're still watching this far in. Please, let me know what you think. Do you think this could be just the natural rocks, the natural land, or do you think it could be something really, really, really old? That's, you know, just parts of it are remaining and we can only slightly make it out. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us. If you like this video, please do give it a wee like. Or maybe subscribe if you want and see more videos like this from our adventures in Scotland. Until next time, cheerio!